his uh, ideological his ideological um, understanding is being carried by the ruling dispensation now they betrayed the freedom movement and they helped the british colonial uh, government at that point of time to uh, create hindrances of the independence now as we all know that uh, the country was under 200 years of british colonial rule and independence has come after a lot of struggle and sacrifices by the common people the working class peasantry students youth women even soldiers of course and a real independence movement started from 1857 as the historians are telling from the deployment to new city and particularly with many twists and turns it has also transformed into somewhat uh, a, a different type of struggle since 1920 after the formation of the communist party of india and uh, on that very year uh, the first trade union center was also formed the centenary we have already celebrated now since then the working class also played a very significant role towards the freedom movement in many of the big movements they took part and particularly from uh, getting independence from the colonial rule in the 40s also which uh, coincided with the great war of the soviet union over the nazi forces after 1945 the freedom movement get a tremendous momentum and uh, in the late 40s many of the countries including india they got uh, independent from the colonial rule of course india was one of them and for the last 75 years uh, it is india only perhaps who was liberated uh, during that point of time has been continuing with the uh, with the democratic structure with the elected government of course there was any twists and turns but it is due to attributable to the constitution which was framed uh, after the uh, independence and which was finalized on uh, in 1949 26 november which was also legalized on 26 january 1950 whose basic fundamental pillar was the secularism democracy and the federal republic and particularly all these pillars are now being attacked by this ruling system so far as uh, our own industry is concerned we are mainly working in a public sector banking industry and after many battle many debates from the mid 50s an economy was formed a mixed economy supported by the then united states of soviet russia ussr and particularly the big industry the manufacturing industry at that point of time the private sector particularly the uh, industrialists at that point of time did not have so much resources to go for big infrastructure projects to go for big manufacturing industries and it was the country itself uh, which is formed the public sector enterprises which ultimately gave a tremendous help for a self reliant economy of the independent india and which is continuing for the last 75 years and after some point of time banks were also nationalized and we know what human service has been rendered by the public sector banking now along with attack on the constitution and this important pillar on the pillar of which this country is resting the government is also held bent to demolish, demolish the public sector enterprises including the public sector finance services so at one point of time when uh, we are in, involving ourselves in the fight against the privatization of the banking industry the privatization of the public sector enterprises it is equally important that we emphasize our attention on on the maintenance of the character of the nation to safeguard the constitution which is under severe attack from the ruling dispensation who are trying to make this secular country in the hindutva rashtra and it is also also more important that it is the secular democratic fabric of the country which has guaranteed this this democracy for continuing for this last 75 years 
and we also understand that this is equally important. On one point, one side, when we are concentrating uh, on fighting on our own industry and particularly of our day-to-day -day problems and other facilities, and at the same time, we must not lose our focus on this attack on the democracy, on the people, and particularly dividing the people on communal, communal lines. So this is a time, a time of 75 years of independence, definitely we will again recollect our views and our findings on the independence movement, the sacrifices that have been made, and of course the sacrifices of our predecessors to maintain this character of the nation. There has been a lot of sacrifice at different points of time, uh, as a result of which the country is still a secular democratic uh, federal republic. And it is our historical responsibility to continue this struggle, if necessary, to make some more sacrifice to maintain the fabric of the country. So, at the, on the eve of the 75 years of this independent India, we must rejuvenate ourselves with the freedom struggle that has been lost, the sacrifices that have been made, and definitely from this we will try to maintain our own historic role in the future so that we can also present our future generation a same secular democratic history of the country. And this is a battle which has to be fought. And for this, we are holding this webinar. Uh, we are fortunate enough to get uh, Comrade K. Hemlata as speaker of this webinar, uh, president of CIQ, and she needs uh, no further introduction. We all know her. She is uh, associated with the bank employees movement also, along with the uh, broader working class and democratic movement of the country. So I think that uh, by this webinar, we will definitely enrich uh, ourselves and uh, try to move ahead to save this country from this pulling dispensation uh, for a better tomorrow. Uh, over to you, Comrade President. I think uh, we will be definitely in this hour with this work. Thank you. Now I request uh, Comrade K. Hemalata, the respected president of CITU, to address in this webinar. Comrade, Comrade Kamarata. What happened? I think you ask her to unmute. Comrade Hamilata, madam, please uh, unmute. Uh, the system is not allowing Comrade Hemlata to unmute. Uh, please unmute. Yes, Comrade. I think uh, now I'm audible. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very well. Uh, okay, Comrade. So, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak in your webinar, a few words about uh, the CITU's understanding on this uh, 75 years, observation of 75 years of understanding of independence. Uh, many, the government itself is uh, uh, 
observing the Azadika in the name of Azadika Amrit Mahotsav. They have been doing that and with a lot of uh, pomp and fanfare, lot of advertisements and uh, uh, this thing that uh, slogan, Har Ghar Tiranga, Ghar Ghar Tiranga, they have and they have given, today we came to know that flags have been given to the postal employees and they are asked to sell the flags to the people. And for the railway employees, they are giving flags and deducting from their money from their salaries. So, <laughs> अभी करना जरूरी थोड़े है आज का आज ही होगा नहीं कल हो जाएगा तो क्या है कल करेंगे सवेरे सब लोग रहेगा ज्यादा लोग रहेंगे सवेरे सब लोग रहेगा कॉम्रेड्स सम वॉइसेस आर कमिंग नहीं बासी नहीं होगा नाउ इट इज ओके नाउ इट्स ओके Comrade Hemlata can continue. Huh. Yes, Comrade. There were some voices in between. And I was muted again. I think now I am audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But I am hearing some voices. Somebody there has a... Some, somebody some was speaking. Yeah, yeah. Now it is okay. No, but you are not visible. Hemlata is not visible. We can't see Hemlata. Please switch on the video, madam. My, my, my video is on. My video is on. My no, video it... is on. But I don't find it on the screen. I am Pradeep here. Yes, yes. I find you. I find myself also. <laughs> now, now it has come. Now oh, your video, come. your video is not on, madam. Now, now it is okay. Both it is on. on. Ah, now ah. it is on. Ah. No, no, now it is so, not on. It is off. Your video is off. Comrade, my video is on in my uh, computer, in my mobile. Uh, it is on. Comrade, both, both are working. Video and audio, both are working. Please continue. But, yeah. But here it is showing red. Ah, now it is okay. Maybe something, now something it is okay. wrong uh, there. Huh? Now huh? it is okay. okay. Okay, comrades. So what I was saying is that the government is spending a lot of money and uh, much on advertisement on this uh, Azadika Amrit Mahotsav. Ghar Ghar Tiranga, they are compelling. They are compelling the postal employees to sell flags. They are compelling the railway employees to buy flags, deducting the uh, money from their wages and uh, all sorts of things. They are asking to change your DP, to take selfies, etc., etc. So this type of thing uh, they are doing. And uh, not only now, their idea is that in the coming 25 years, they will be uh, observing as Amrit Kal, towards the centenary of our independence. The remaining 25 years will be observed as Amrit Kal. We don't know if the government is in power, what they will do. So this is at a time when this government, the mentor, the guru of this, the guide of this BJP, the RSS, they had no role in independent struggle. Already comrades have told uh, I could not hear your president, but I heard to some extent uh, Comrade Debash was uh, speaking. He was explaining about uh, how uh, the role of the RSS, which they don't have any 
they are trying to project themselves by appropriating some uh, icons of independent struggle. Already they have tried, and now they are projecting as if Sardar Patel, actually Sardar Patel, uh, who has banned RSS after the assassination of Gandhiji because of its role in his assassination. And he has been created. They have been trying to appropriate Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. They have been trying to appropriate uh, uh, so many other, uh, even Bhagat Singh, Ambedkar. So this type of thing, those who don't have any role in independence struggle, now they are trying to project themselves as uh, uh, leaders of this movement, etc., etc. So actually this, we have to understand and the role, now they are projecting Savarkar, the only person they have to project is Savarkar, and that role of the Savar, uh, Savarkar in the independent struggle, we all know how he has betrayed the actually, except for the initial stages, when he wrote something about the 1857, first war of independence and how Hindus and Muslims work together, he appreciated that. But later on, particularly after he was uh, uh, sentenced to the punishment, the cellular jail he was kept, then he started seeking mercy, so many mercy petitions he has written. He has said that if you release me, I will be more useful than you keep in, uh, me in jail, et cetera, et cetera. So how uh, he has, all that we know. And he kept his word also. Today, what we are talking about Hindutva, it is Savarkar who coined that word Hindutva. And Hindutva is not any way related to religion, Hindu. Uh, faith or Hindu belief that he himself has told that it is a political uh, structure, a political project. And he advocated the division, the nation on the basis of religion. So this is the history. This is their role. And to that extent, he has formed Hindu Mahasabha and Hindu Mahasabha has been instrumental in provoking riots and uh, dividing the society which actually the British were wanted to divide and rule and that project, the RSS has helped, the predecessor of the RSS has helped. So this is their role and today they want to project themselves as uh, the leaders of independent uh, struggle. So this is what we need to expose to the people. And also nation does not mean any soil. Nation means the people. That is how a poet was telling that nation doesn't mean soil, nation means people. And what was the role of the people in the independence struggle? Just now Devashish was saying that people have fought for independence. So what was the role of the workers? What was the role of the peasants, the common people who have made immense sacrifices? During the independence struggle, we all know how the workers have fought in different industries, in different industrial centers in Mumbai, in uh, Bombay, today's Mumbai, in Calcutta, and other industrial centers also. All sectors, the textile workers, the railway workers, and the workers in the uh, jute industry, other industries, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they have gone on so many struggles along with their own demands. They have also participated in the independent struggle, the calls of the independent movement, whatever calls were given by the leaders of the independent movement, workers participated in large numbers. So many strikes have taken place. Particularly, we all know how the Bombay working class has gone on six day strike against the six years uh, uh, imprisonment given to Tilak one day each for one year of uh, imprisonment. And also during the naval revolt, the revolt of the Royal Navy uh, in Mumbai, and also which later spread to the different places, the workers have struck work. So these, the role of the working class is uh, huge. Lacks and lacks of workers have participated. And not only the workers, the peasants, we all know the revolts in different parts of the country. 
the peasants were fighting against the zamindars, against the landlords, and against the royals, etc., who were supporting the British. And also the way the students have participated in the struggle, boycotting classes, the way the women have participated following Gandhiji in different movements in large numbers, uh, donating their jewelries and making sacrifices. So this way, all sections of the people, in the urban areas, in the rural areas, men, women, workers, peasants, it is through these struggles that we got independence. And what was the vision, what we need to remember today when we are celebrating 75 of our independence, what was the vision of the common people? What did they want when they made all these sacrifices in the independence struggle? So their vision is not just that the British are replaced by Indian rulers but their vision that the exploitation will end, their suppression will end, they will have better lives, they, their children, the future generations will have better lives, decent employment, dignified living, illiteracy will be uh, eradicated, hunger will be eradicated, employment will be generated, India will develop as an industrially advanced country, providing decent employment to uh, the youth and the all eligible workers, etc. So this was the vision of the people who fought for independence. Now, today, when we are observing the uh, Amrit Mahotsav, 75 of five years of independence, how far have we achieved this? 75 years is not a small period. It is time enough to look back and what was the vision of our forefathers who fought for independence and what has been achieved today? Where are we today? And what is our path forward to realize the vision of the uh, people who fought for independence? How do we move forward? That is the question before us. And with that uh, um, objective, we have to uh, analyze the situation the past years. Immediately after independence, there were some effort, uh, attempts to uh, uh, implement the vision or the aspirations, to see that the aspirations of the people are fulfilled to some extent. And that was reflected in the uh, found expression, rather to in our uh, constitution, the constitution that was drafted in which Ambedkar has played a major role. And in that, all these things are there. They are, um, and just now, uh, as uh, Comrade has told, we have said that we have, we the people, we have given ourselves the constitution. And the constitution says that India will be a socialist, uh, secular republic. And then it will be social justice, freedom, freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of uh, practicing one's own, the religion of one's choice, the faith of one's choice. So all these freedoms are given. And then the directive principles. The directive principles also say that we have to, uh, our policy should be formulated so that we'll have the right to work will be there. Uh, living wages will be there. If employment would not be found, unemployment elements uh, should be there. And so many things are there in the constitution. Actually, these reflected the aspirations of the people who fought for independence. And similarly, after independence, uh, several uh, legislations have been enacted the Minimum Wages Act, the Industrial Disputes Act, the ESI, the EPF, the Bonus Act, and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, Equal Remuneration Act, later the Contract uh, Workers Act, uh, uh, Regulation, uh, Abolition and uh, Regularization Act. So these different acts, they were also uh, enacted after independence. And as uh, just now told, 
the life insurance. Uh, it was nationalized. The banks were nationalized. General insurance was nationalized. So all this, it is not just the government has done like that. These are all because the government had to do because the people fought in the independent struggle with this vision. And they had to at least to some extent meet the people's vision, people's aspirations. Because of that, these were enacted. But at the same time, we also have to remember that though people have fought in the independent struggle, made large, uh, huge sacrifices, it was not uh, the people's representatives, actually the representatives of the toiling people who have led the independent struggle. So the left, the socialists, the communists, they have played a major role, they have made contributed in mobilizing the peasants, the workers, and other sections. They have raised the demand for uh, total independence first. All these things they have done, but at the same time, it was the Congress party that led the independence struggle. And the Congress party, as we all know, they represent, represented the interests of the big capitalists of our country. So, this got reflected also in the implementation and also gradually uh, in the formulation of policies. So all these acts were enacted, but there were not much effort to ensure their implementation effectively, all these uh, different legislations. And even during the 60s and 68s, we all know how the Congress, uh, the government, at that time, the government treated whenever people fought for their uh, rights or fought for their benefits on their demands. 1960, how the uh, strike of the central government employees was suppressed, 1960-68. What were the demands? Demands were the minimum wages, DEA, et cetera, et cetera. And 74, how the railway employees, railway workers' strike was suppressed. That we all know. The demand was the working hours, the DEA, wages, etc. So on these issues, when the workers have gone on strike, they, after the asthma was promulgated, ordinances were promulgated, they were put in jail, they were tortured, their families were tortured. So this was the attitude even in the beginning also, because the ruling classes, though they try to uh, incorporate certain aspirations of the people, at the same time, they wanted to protect their class interests also. So the people had to fight for the acts, whatever acts have been uh, enacted for the, the constitutional benefits, it is because of the people's fight, and to get them implemented also, the working class had to fight uh, again, again, making many sacrifices, even after independence. And in fact, the policy, actually the industrial policy of 1948, which was passed at that time, that reflected more of the demands of the Bombay, uh, this, uh, uh, The Bombay plan. Bombay plan, Bombay plan that the industrial Bombay plan that the industrialists have formulated before independence, they have sat and they have prepared a plan, and that was more or less incorporated in the industrial policy of the country. There was another vision during the independence struggles. The socialists and the communists they had a separate vision for the country, which reflected the interests of the workers and the common people. They wanted the Soviet, there was a model, the Soviet model was there, where unemployment was eradicated, where uh, hunger and poverty have all brought down, where the country was advancing. And the working class, the leaders of the working class movement, the socialists, the communists, they wanted that that model should be implemented in our country. But because the leadership of the independent struggle was in the hands of the Congress, and the Congress reflected the interests of the big capitalists in our country. It was not 
accepted. Even when a, a private member's bill was introduced in the parliament, it was not accepted. It was uh, uh, the person who brought a Congress person, he was asked to withdraw that. So ultimately, our ruling classes have chosen this capitalist plan, uh, path because that suits them. It was not the actually to meet the aspirations of the people, common people, the workers, etc. And gradually, during the course of time, it was the big capitalists who have uh, benefited, as uh, has already pointed out. At the time of independence, they did not, the big capitalists in our country, they did not have that resources to invest in the infrastructure and to uh, develop them because they wanted immediate profits. You cannot uh, get immediate profits uh, by investing huge amounts in the infrastructure and other things necessary for the self-reliant development of the country. So even there, it was said that where the big capitalists, they cannot make the investment is infrastructure, et cetera, the government will uh, invest. It will be in the public sector. So the public sector was set up. As I told, constitution was there. The public sector was set up. The planning commission was there. And public sector has contributed in developing the self-reliance of our country, in having a balanced uh, development, even in the remote areas, public sector units were set up. And then uh, uh, they generated employment. The areas were developed, created a lot of uh, other employment also. So this way, whatever development was there, but at the same time, in this process, the big beneficiaries was the big capitalists of our country. They had amassed wealth. And in the process, when they were ready, and also during this time also, whenever there was any crisis, that crisis uh, in the system, that was uh, the burden of that was imposed on the workers. Wages were sought to be cut. DA was sought to be cut or withheld. Uh, or bonuses, et cetera, were sought to be withheld. So all these things, at the same time, the working class, they were trying to uh, curtail their benefits, but the main beneficiaries were the big capitalists. And in 1991, when the crisis was there, the balance of uh, payment crisis was there, at that time, the policy itself was changed according to the neoliberal uh, uh, method. That is neoliberalism, we all know. It is uh, a phase or a method to address the crisis of that time in other countries, in Latin America, in Europe, in other countries, it was implemented earlier. But in our country, it was formally uh, initiated in 1991. So the entire thing, the focus also uh, changed. And gradually from that time, the privatization, liberalization, then uh, the attacks on the labor rights, they have all struck. Because the main objective is to protect the profits of the big capitalists and uh, attack the opposition to their policies, weaken the trade unions. That is one of the main objectives. So uh, the efforts to change labor laws, they were started since that time they were there they were talking about the need to change labor laws labor law reforms etc etc so successive governments this was initiated by the congress uh, government but later also all these parties which represented the interests of the capitalist class the, whether it is coalition government, whether it is BJP government, whether it was Congress government, since then all the governments have implemented the same policies. We all know about that. So now what is the change is that this BJP government is implementing them even more aggressively. Even more aggressively because the crisis also has increased and that uh, burden they want to put on the common people, on the workers. And in addition to that, they are trying to impose the Hindu thought. And what our understanding is that this, whenever there is crisis, the cri burden of the crisis is sought to be put on the uh, shoulders of the working people. The unemployment is increasing, prices are increasing, the job losses are increasing, 
and all these are efforts to do that. And whenever it is there, whenever there is oppression, the main attack is to weaken the trade unions, weaken the opposition. And that is being implemented by the BJP government more aggressively. On the one hand, they are committed to neoliberalism. They are committed to capitalism and neoliberalism. They are uh, committed to the interests of the promoting to the interests of the corporate classes. And the second thing is they are also committed to the Hindutva ideology, ideologically also. So this is now the, what the uh, present government is doing after coming to power. We have seen how in the initial phases they have uh, tried to implement that, but even more aggressively after they came to power for the second time. And to uh, do this, that Hindutva project, they are trying to divide the working class, the working class and the toiling masses. This is a, a mechanism in the, uh, to divide the working class in different names. That is the tactics adopted by the ruling classes across the world in the capitalist system. In other countries, Europe, et cetera, it is the race, it is the migrant workers and other things. In our country, this Hindutva, is being utilized uh, to divide the people. The othering of this, that is the others, the, who are the real enemy to divert the attention, to mislead the workers and to uh, deceive them through slogans like nationalism, uh, patriotism, etc., etc. Mainly what they are saying is that the enemy is the Muslims. So enemy is the minorities and the Muslims. So the anger is directed towards that for that, they are saying the Hindus are uh, in danger, Hindu faith is in danger, Hindu religion is in danger. So the real thing is that, as already Savarkar himself has said, Hindutva and Hinduism are not the same. Hinduism actually, Savarkar himself, he was uh, said that he was not a, a follower of any religion, he's an atheist. But he brought this forward this uh, uh, political project of Hindutva to divide the people on the basis of religion for a pro political, uh, for the power uh, uh, of this uh, uh, majority, majoritarian power. So this is the uh, one of the things that the, on the basis of religion to divide the people. And at the same time, to weaken opposition, the, to suppress, all the democratic rights, to suppress resistance, to suppress opposition, to suppress the struggles. The authoritarian tendencies and the fascistic tendencies are also, because of the RSS, we all know Savarkar and the RSS, they're all admirers of uh, Nazism, of Hitler, of fascist uh, Mussolini, etc. So they are followers of that and they are trying to implement these authoritarian tendencies to suppress this the constitutional rights, all are being violated. No talk about equality, no talk about the freedom of practicing any religion attack, Muslim minorities are being attacked. The, we have seen in different uh, these things, what they are doing in Karnataka, what they have done in Gujarat, what they are now doing in Karnataka, in the name of hijab, in the name of uh, halal, in the name of uh, lao jihad, in the name of azam, so in everything that mainly is to uh, attack the rights of the Muslims, create a, a fear, a, a psychosis among them and isolate them, destroy their uh, uh, trades and their incomes, etc. So this type of thing, so that created terror among them. This also is meant to uh, create the impression that the enemy is there the Hindus, the majority of people, you are not getting employment because you, uh, the rulers, the so-called people that are appeasing, vote bank politics, the appeasement of Muslims, etc. Because of that, Hindus are not getting their due. So this type of thing they are trying to create, so to divide the people. And it is not only the minorities. Even the Dalits are being attacked. Today, how the, in the name of cow slaughter, how many places Dalits are being attacked? So the attacks on the Dalits are increasing, attacks on women are increasing, violence against women is increasing, attacks on the minorities are increasing. All this is one aspect. 
Second, the democratic rights. If you raise your voice, you are called, if you raise your demands, you are called naxals, you are called uh, uh, terrorists, then the different machinery of the states are also being used to suppress. Today, you, the use of uh, uh, enforcement directorate, anybody, everybody is afraid, particularly the other political parties. They are uh, afraid to raise their voice that an enforcement electorate will be used to suppress their voice. The use of uh, income tax, the use of CPI, the use of national investigating agencies, all the different institutions of the state are being utilized to suppress dissent, suppress them, whereas you know how uh, the Bhima Koregao, people who are fighting for the rights of the Dalits, they have been, uh, been arrested and even now they are in jail. We are celebrating on the one hand 75 years of uh, independence in the name of Azadi Ka Amrit Mihorsa. And on the other hand, those who are fighting for the rights of uh, the Dalits and the common people who are fighting for human rights, they are being kept in the jail. How Tista Setalwat has been arrested and she is in jail. How Sri Kumar is arrested. So all these things we find that, and it is not only they, in general, the uh, trade union rights are also being attacked. We are not allowed to demonstrate. The COVID also has been utilized for that to suppress. The workers are not allowed to uh, hold demonstrations on go on strike. And now the labor courts are being changed. The labor laws which were formulated, which were enacted to meet the aspirations of the working class and the people who fought during independence, they were enacted soon after independence. And after the introduction of neoliberal policies, they have been uh, trying to gradually dilute them. And now with the BJP in power, the labor laws have already been, 29 labor laws have been uh, made into four labor codes. One labor code on wages has been passed in 2019. In 2020, in the midst of the uh, pandemic, and uh, when the opposition MPs were not there in parliament, they were already uh, suspended from parliament when they want, uh, demanded a division on the issue of these farm laws. So after that, the labor codes also were passed. So this way, and what are these labor codes? Basically, you all know about the details of the labor codes. I don't want to explain them, but the intention of the labor codes is mainly to weaken the trade union rights, to weaken the basic rights of organization and collective action of the working class, to disarm them. So that is the main intent. And whatever benefits in terms of minimum wages or social security benefits in terms of working hours, workplace safety, et cetera, et cetera, all these things will be diluted. So that is why we are demanding that labor codes should be scrapped. So that is when the labor codes have been enacted and privatization, the government is going ahead with uh, the privatization spree. You have fought and you have been able till now to, that the bill for privatization of the two uh, the banks have is not introduced till now electricity privatization bill that they have already introduced despite giving assurance to the farmers during the farmers struggle that was one of their main demand that the electricity bill should be withdrawn they have assured the farmers, the SKM, Sanyukta Kisan Murcha, that without consulting the farmers, they will not introduce the bill in the parliament. But they have introduced the bill without any consultation, without any discussion with the farmers. They have uh, introduced the bill. And today there was a very big uh, mobilization. The uh, SKM has uh, given uh, the call that or when it is introduced, they will go on uh, mobilization. The electricity employees also, unitedly, the engineers and all, all unions, they have come together and they have uh, held big demonstrations. And ultimately, because of all this pressure and also the pressure from the political parties in parliament, they have been compelled to uh, 
give it to the parliamentary standing committee for examination. So this is this also they are not been doing since uh, the recent times. All the bills were introduced and passed even without any discussion. Most of the bills were being passed. So this way that how to promote their on the one hand the people's uh, livelihoods are being attacked. There is no discussion even in the parliament. We have seen now how the MPs were not allowed to discuss on the burning issues of the people. Unemployment is increasing. Prices are increasing. The government do no, is not doing anything, but they are not even allowing the discussion on these issues in parliament. So the parliament, the rights of MPs, unprecedentedly, 27 uh, MPs have been suspended from parliament in the, uh, in, during this session. So MPs rights are also being curtailed. Uh, Discussions are not allowed in the parliament. Constitutional rights are being attacked. Human, basic human rights, basic democratic rights are being attacked. So all these things are meant mainly to bulldoze their policies, the policies which are beneficial. You all know how they have enacted the uh, this uh, insolvency and bankruptcy, this thing, and how they are giving benefits to the uh, big corporates uh, on their loans, giving concessions to them, uh, having uh, haircuts, etc., so that they need not pay the entire thing. So all these things, the big corporates are being give, being given uh, benefits, uh, concessions, etc. At the same time, uh, for the common people, their livelihoods are coming down. Now during this period, again, the inequalities have increased. The constitution talks about bringing down inequalities that uh, uh, the policy should be directed to bring down the inequalities. But now what has happened under this uh, uh, government's rule? Inequalities have increased like anything. Poverty has again increased. Working people, if today, the working people, uh, particularly in the unorganized sector, they are not able to live by doing one job. In the rural areas, recently in some states, uh, some surveys have been conducted by the CITU, where we found that in the rural areas, work in agriculture is coming down. Ex uh, expenditure on Manrega has been curtailed. Workers who are doing the Manrega jobs, they are not being paid. The work is not there even for 15 days in a year. Actually, 100 days of job has to be given. But even 15 days job they are not getting. And even for the work they have done for three months and four months, they are not being paid. So that is the situation in the rural areas because agriculture is in crisis. There is no job, uh, no work in agriculture. But at the same time, in the urban areas also, there is no work. Manufacturing work is not increasing. Whatever jobs the workers are doing, they are mostly desperate, uh, out of destitution, self-employment, selling vegetables or uh, doing some odd works, etc. No decent work. The government is saying that uh, the social security code will be applicable to the gig workers also. But there is what type of uh, welfare benefits they will get when they are not even recognized as workers. So that is the question. No allotment has been made. So the government is trying to deceive, this government is trying to deceive the people all for the benefits of the big capitalists, big corporates. They are talking about uh, uh, nationalism, patriotism, etc. But it is not uh, just uh, for the benefit of our country. They are even bringing benefits to the multinational corporations and monopoly companies, uh, uh, foreign monopoly companies also, they are giving orders. So this way, our self-reliant economy, our manufacturing capacities, they're all being curtailed and big corporates, foreign corporates are also being favored. So that is the policy. So that reflects actually the policies, the corporate friendly policies of the government, this BJP government, which is corporate friendly and also wedded to Hindu. So this corporate communal nexus that they are being uh, that they are implementing to favor the corporates. And in that, to weaken the struggle, 
to divide the people, all these methods are being implemented. So what we need to understand is that the response of this government, the policies that are being implemented are desperate attempts of the uh, system of the ruling classes to preserve the system which is in crisis. It is, uh, uh, the crisis was there even before the pandemic, since 2008, they have been saying that the crisis is uh, uh, receding or there are some green shoots, economy is growing, etc., etc. but it has never happened. And the pandemic has worsened the situation. Even now, it has not even reached to the pre-pandemic levels. So employment, decent employment is uh, uh, not there. Uh, the government is not accepting that we are in recession. But in many places, uh, many uh, economists are saying that recession uh, is there. In the US, recession is there, they are saying. So whatever, whether it is recession or whatever term you may give, the thing is that the people are suffering. It is the people, the unemployment, there is no solution uh, to this uh, in this system. Uh, despite the huge resources today, Despite the wealth that has been created by the working people today, which is available and wealth is concentrated in the hands of a few. A, peop uh, a couple of people are able to go to space on tourism, spend there for 11 minutes, etc. Whereas people are dying. Every minute 11 people are dying in the uh, world. So that is the situation, the level of concentration of wealth today. And in our country also, that is the same thing. So this is what we have to address today. When we are observing 75 years of independence, the dreams and the vision of those of our forefathers who fought for independence, that is not any way near of achieving. We are very, very far from that. And whatever we have achieved immediately after independence, now all that is also being taken away because of this system. This is what we need to. We are talking about protecting the constitution, protect our democratic rights, protect our secularism. All these things are very much necessary. And to protect that, how to protect that? We have to uh, understand the role of the working class in that. It is because of the struggles of the working class and the common people, whatever we have achieved. And again, to protect that, the working class and the common people have to take, particularly the working class has to take the lead in that struggle. But today, we cannot claim that our members, whether it is in BFE or whether it is uh, in the CIT or in any other uh, organization, uh, which are uh, comparatively militant, comparatively progressive sections uh, committed to a revolutionary ideology with an understanding the need to change the society. Even our members are also falling victims to this type of ideology. Today, the uh, in, uh, influence of RSS is increasing among the employees and the working class. Even recently, I have gone to Telangana there they were saying the lot of struggles are there. People are participating in struggles and through the struggles they have been able to achieve something. They are appreciating the role of the CITU, but at the same time, they are angry with the TRS, but what is the alternative? They see BJP as the alternative. And I don't think that is an isolated uh, case or isolated state in many areas, even where we are, uh, strong even there our members are also are increasingly falling victims to the ideology of the rss because they work in many ways they go to the grassroots they talk they talk uh, to the women to the children they organize many other programs the cultural activities the festivals etc etc and then through them they try to create an impression that hinduism and hindutva are the same which is not. That is what I think we have to explain to the people. When we, we have to go to the people, we have to fight on their uh, 
uh, immediate issues, workplace issues on their wages, on uh, their benefits, on their workplace rights against privatization. And at the same time, we have also to fight against the communal ideology, the danger of, uh, particularly because RSS, BJP is in power, the danger of BJP, uh, RSS, and the Hindutva communal forces. But that doesn't mean that the other uh, fundamentalism or the religious fundamentalists are less dangerous. One will feed into the other. When majority communalism rises, there will be rise in the minority communalism, minority fundamentalism also. That is also we are uh, seeing. So all types of fundamentalism, communalism, we have to fight because if all are the same. When it comes to the rights of the workers, when it comes to the policies, there is not difference between them. When it comes to the attacks on uh, women, when it comes to the attack of the democratic rights, et cetera, they're all the same. And on the policies also, there is not much of a difference. So all types of communalism also we have to fight. And we have to explain to the people the link between the uh, uh, their immediate issues and the policies that are being followed by the government, pursued by the government. Because what we see today uh, recently, LIC, uh, under the leadership of uh, our All India Insurance Employees Association, they fought against the I, uh, IPO in LIC, they fought against privatization, they are always participating in numbers of all the services and strikes, etc. But at the same time, many of them uh, are not averse to the policies. They have also purchased the uh, shares in LIC, which was offered. Uh, at a comparatively uh, lesser price to them. So the link between the issues and the policies also we have to explain. And then what are the uh, uh, politics behind these policies? What are the politics that determine these policies? The Congress is also, follow, uh, has been in, Congress has initiated the neoliberal policies in the initial stages under the Congress leadership. The present path has been uh, decided. And wherever they are in power, they are implementing the same policies. The various regional parties are also implementing the same policies. So who are the actual uh, friends of the working class who are supporting these policies and who are opposing these policies? In the parliament, who are opposing these policies? In the, when the uh, code on wages came, when there was division, who uh, made the amendments and who uh, supported the demands of the workers, who tried to raise the demands of the workers within the parliament. In the electricity uh, privatization, in different privatization. So this we have to, who are with the workers in the parliament, outside the parliament, which uh, political, force is supporting which policies, implementing which policies. Unless people are made aware of that, what we are seeing today is that they are participating in the strikes, they are participating in the struggles on their own immediate demands. Also, in the joint struggles, in the strikes, we have been saying that more and more people are participating in the strikes. But at the same time, when it comes to the elections, when it comes to deciding who will govern the country, the same parties are coming into uh, power. So we have to, what the BJP government today wants is to project the other as the enemy, to divert the attention. What we need to project is to uh, project the policies which are against the interests of the workers as the enemies. Those who are implementing the policies which are against the interest of the workers as the real enemies, and we have to expose these politics also. I think that is the major task before us in this uh, 75th year of independence. We'll be completing 75 years in a few days. So when we are observing this uh, uh, 75 years of independence, it is this that we need to explain to the workers, reach to the workers. And uh, along with the workers, we also have to explain to the common people.
because today the government is trying it may not be so serious in the government uh, banking sector but also in the banking sector it is there but in many areas uh, like state government central government etc uh, even telecom bsnl the government is trying to through its policies it is trying to weaken those sectors unemployment is there job vacancies are there but pressure is there on the employees but at the same time the government is trying to project that the uh, employees they are having high wages and they are lazy they are not working they are not sincere they are corrupt etc etc so create a divide between the common people and the workers so this the employees so this also we have to consciously try to bridge several commendable efforts have already been made by our unions like against the privatization how befi has conducted signature campaign and going to the people uh, explain the impact of this uh, privatization etc on the common people our insurance comrades have also done a uh, telecom also bsnl employees union also has done but i think this has to be increased several times so that we can unite the people more and more behind the demands as of now the support of the common people to the struggles of uh, the joint trade union platform has increased particularly when uh, during this uh, farmer struggle uh, the working class has extended uh, full support to the farmer struggle physically participated financially supported so that has created a Uh, uh, a feeling of solidarity between these two sections, but this has to be taken much more among the people and exposing the policies and the politics of the uh, BJP government, the danger of their Hindutva uh, communal uh, policies, how they divide the people, how it is necessary to unite the people, strengthen the unity and intensify the struggle, and that is the only way to realize. the dreams and the vision of the working class our forefathers who made immense sacrifices sacrificed the entire thing their lives their uh, living conditions their properties uh, i think that will be the uh, proper way to uh, ensure that their dreams are realized to expose the system and mobilize the people thank you comrades comrades we will be concluding this session within a few minutes when we are observing the 75th year of independence our prime minister is claiming on one side that india is the motherland of democracy comrade hemalada was narrating in detail how democracy is being butchered and undermined by the present regime and how the democratic rights of the people are being attacked the second claim by the prime minister is that this government is trying to fulfill the dreams of the freedom fighters what was the dream what were the dreams of the freedom fighters and how those dreams were being undermined by the present regime by putting the lives of the people majority of the people in misery that is also very well explained by comrade hemalata the task of the working class is not easy because we are under a regime which is defined as a totalitarian regime what is a totalitarian regime that is being defined in history it will have a dual state one is a normative state and another is a prerogative state what is normative yes we are having democracy we are having election in every 5 year to the assemblies to the parliament to the local body we are having running the parliament we are running the state assembly but how the business of the parliament is being conducted how the people's representative are being purchased 
how the verdict of the people is being thrown away into the winds under this regime that is very well explained by comrade amrada this is the character of the normative government the character of the prerogative government it is an institutionalized lawlessness you take every institutions of the democracy what is the role of the judiciary when the very fundamental issues of the constitution is being violated and the constitution bench of the supreme court is still on the issue of article 370 which was abolished in 2019 august 5 so this is the character of this government during this 75 years of the independent of this country what we have witnessed whatever may be the political alignment that was in governance they were serving the interest of the monopoly capital now the capitalism is facing an unprecedented crisis in its history and they are trying to exploit the labor in a more intensified manner that is why our country is also under the regime of a neo fascist neo liberal alliance i just draw a example we are having two neighboring countries sri lanka got independent in 1948 what is the state of affairs in sri lanka i need not explain another neighboring country china became independent in 1949 where is china now it is competing to become the number one economic power in the world so whether the system has any role in defining the future of the people that is the thing to be debated yes if we want to fulfill the dreams of our freedom fighters the responsibility falls on the shoulders of the working class of this country the working class has done its due role during the freedom struggle and during this past 75 years whatever little progress the common people have in their lives we can see it is correlated to the struggle led by the working class now a time has come the working class has to come to the leadership of the masses to change the regime to change the system that is the call of the hour that is the message the 75th year of independence of this country is giving to the masses of this country now i request comrade pradeep bishwas our vice president to propose formal vote of thanks pradeep da comrade pradeep da is disconnected you okay. ask comrade cp krishnan cp ke no pradeep da jai yes no pradeep da jai okay pradeep da you are requested to propose formal vote of thanks pradeep da can you hear me pradeep da please unmute no my link is not working properly you ask kiranjit to do it now now you are audible now you are audible you can speak
or else comrade chiranjit please sir come forward chiranjit god yes comrade uh, on i mean um, this is a very important occasion that uh, we have we have uh, comrade hemlata uh, president citu addressing our webinar uh, for the first time and that too in the 75th year of independence now uh, what uh, comrade hemlata spoke at this occasion is no doubt a very important most important and uh, i think uh, all of us uh, have followed i have seen the uh, uh, facebook live streaming also there nearly 100 persons have been following the speech so uh, on behalf of uh, our bank employees federation of india i uh, pro propose my vote of thanks to comrade hemlata uh, who with despite all the problems at the uh, at the uh, when we started there were some link problems but uh, somehow uh, thanking all of you that we could overcome that and he uh, was able to uh, she was able to uh, deliver her uh, address in a proper way and uh, we have we have taken every sides uh, we we have one more one more webinar that will be on the 22nd that will be also on the 75th year of independence and that will be addressed by a histo a, a his professor of history and uh, we request all of you to join us in that webinar also and uh, with that i uh, i will i will uh, request uh, comrade hemlata that in future also we need her guidance we need her to participate in our uh, webinars our members will be eager to hear from her and uh, i thank uh, all of you who have participated in this webinar i thank the uh, kerala bfi who have hosted this webinar in a very successful manner and with that i uh, request my president to conclude the session of webinar today that's all okay comrades once again thanking you all today's program is concluded thank you